I'm from the University of Strathclyde. Um, this is not really a pedagogy talk, but more sort of administration, how we put things together uh, in a more sort of efficient way. Um, this is our really high level project goal. You can download the slides, but basically we wanted to sort of streamline assessment practice all the way through from the start to the end. Um, in a bit more detail, we had lots of these scope diagrams. The bits I'm actually going to talk about are not the top and bottom ones. Um, the, everything else is um, part of the project, and this is actually part of the just the Moodle successes we've had um, within that. So we came into this project um, sort of aware there were a couple of issues with Moodle. Um, the first one is, uh, well, people seem quite scared of the gradebook. Um, it's quite time consuming to set up and we also find that for a lot of people actually what they're doing is quite monotonous. They're setting up the same structures all the time. We're also finding that people then pick up the gradebook and they latch onto things like calculations because they understand Excel and these are quite brittle features of Moodle uh, and we wanted to try and make something which is much more robust um, um, to really prevent the sort of gradebook becoming a, being an obstacle to the teaching uh, and learning um, sort of that the staff are trying to deliver. On top of that, we have organizational issues. These are some of the examples of the different forms that our institution describes a module. Um, there's at least six different varieties of um, paper form, um, and uh, there's, there's no consistency in them. So for, for us as the, the central IT, trying to communicate some of the information in there is, is quite difficult. So at the start of the project, we actually did a sort of random sample of the, the module descriptors and we went through and identified each of the issues and tried to cherry pick the ones that we really wanted to fix. We found lots of really, really wacky issues in actual the content they put in there. Um, so students were given module descriptors that said your assessment is 30% of your coursework. Well, that's 30% of 100. Where's the other 70% coming from? Um, we had termino terminology such as sufficient or normally, again, the students not left with any guidance about it. And then we have really complicated calculations which are given to students to say this is how it, how it works. Um, so what we try to do is try and take a sort of pragmatic view. Um, and we did a series of sort of uh, workshops with them and we tried to uh, go into them uh, and try and condense this down to a, a sort of a terminology that everybody could use. Going into these workshops was a bit like Julius Caesar. We felt with everybody and knives are going to be out to get us with um, what was happening in it. But we broadly settled on four really broad categories and put everybody. So if you start thinking about your activities in these broad terms, we can do something to just help that communication of the assessment structure um, to the students. Now, you may recognize that some of these categorizations are fairly close to uni stats and key information sets that we had to do a couple of years ago. And again, that's consistency with the student experience, trying to find ways that they can um, have that thread of understanding following through their course. Um, so once we settled these sort of four component categories, um, we then went about coming up with a, a core gradebook structure. Um, we recognize um, that there are different pieces of data that appear in the gradebook. We had come up with these broad topic headings and the purists in our institution pretty much made a big much ado about nothing that these things aren't what they say they are. And we basically had to turn around and say to them, we've co-opted them. These might not mean what you traditionally mean them to do, but in the context of March term, we're going to use these terms to mean certain things. So summative activities, they apply to the students' grades. Formative ones, they don't contribute, but they're going to go up and do them. And administrative, it's for information, it's there for, you know, tracking all that information that we've, 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 we've done that. And we took this structure and then we mapped our component parts onto them. Now, due to the quirks of Moodle and how we work with the gradebook, we had to do a little bit of reorg reorganizing in terms of creating some additional categories. And we split it up into a description of standard activities, which tend to be the first attempt students, and then research activities for the students who are in that class, but they're doing a slightly different sort of assessment regime. Um, and the important part is, is for when we actually start talking to the students and showing the gradebook, only the categories that are pertinent to the assessment regime are actually presented to the students. So if you have a 60-40 split between coursework and examination, you'll never see practical or project. And it's, it's trying to tidy, up, tidy that up with the, with the staff. So this is our list of uh, classes that we've got. We, we have had to build a tool out in Moodle to um, sort of try and capture this data set. 
Well, in each class, we ask for a really rudimentary breakdown of the assessment regime. We're not asking them to go down to, you're going to do six essays and stuff like that. We are doing really high level description. And we ask them to explain really broadly how those component parts sit together. Um, and once it's filled in, that's what they, we, we get on there. So once they fill this in, we now hold this in data. And we found that for a lot of cases, this is sufficient data to get that, that broad uh, description. Um, so this actually then allows us to uh, put in, most people we found tend to, work in the, tend to work in the percentage mode, but we did find that there's a couple of places where people are working and really adamant that they want thirds, um, which if you're doing Moodle gradebook calculations and thirds, is, doesn't work. Once we've done this, we can now apply this um, to the Moodle gradebook. Um, now that's normally fine if you've got uh, a new class. Um, we did look at migrating all the existing assessment regimes into this. We wrote a wizard tool for, for trying to do this. We spent a lot of time on it. Um, basically, it doesn't work, it's too dumb. Um, for all the simplistic cases we could do it, it's really fine, but we spent effort and we basically went, we're gonna have to bite the bullet and say the Moodle way of working with the gradebook is going to have to suffice for just now. There's too many cases where people had set up fancy aggregations and things like that. But we hit that apply button and uh, it automatically sends it to the gradebook just as you like it. And this is what you get. Um, we have a, a structure which is set up um, with the, the percentages at the high level. Um, that data will also get synced to an automatic uh, base as well, so you don't have to, to push the button. Um, and it goes and creates a number of high level categories. Um, in order to communicate that top level class total, um, we actually set the summative category to be weighted one and everything else to be zero. So for all the students who are doing the subject for the first time, the class total is what they should expect to see. Um, and we use the grade items to, so to display the other information if under reset condition. <laughs> one of the issues we found is that um, people kind of can edit things in the grade but with, a, with a lot of freedom. So stop it turning to a comedy, there are errors, errors, we basically disabled all the editing of the top level categories. So you see, unlike a standard Moodle gradebook where you can move them about, the ones that define the core structure for um, uh, examination or practical can't be moved, can't be reweighted, um, can't have the aggregation modes um, changed in terms of how they sit together at the top level. <coughs> Below that, we offer them all the Moodle functionality that they want to do. So if, we want, if they want the flexibility of putting six quizzes into a category and saying you're dropping the last two and then taking the average of the rest, they can do that. But that will only contribute to a fixed part of the, the grade of it. And ideally what happens is those module descriptors all get done. We migrate the data into our data set, we apply it to the grade book, and at some point the teaching happens. And all we have to get the staff to do is, well, when you go into teaching, you decide how you want to implement that particular bit of um, teaching, you put it in the right category, and that's all you have to do anymore. So we come back to uh, this idea, um, and we'll see that the, the, the class total as it fills out gets worked out automatically by um, that um, top level. This works really well for the grade, but we also wanted to make sure that the data we had in here um, also fed into a marks return process. This actually led us to identify a bit of a Schrodinger's cat situation. Um, for our, some of our courses, they typically have two potential values that a student can be having at any one moment in time um, that we can't resolve with the data that we had. One is that they're a first attempt student, they get the standard total. If they're research student, we don't know that in data in our VLE. And if there's an exemption criteria, some of the exemption criteria are so complicated that we can't actually algorithmically work out in the gradebook. So what we actually have had to do is prevent, present at least three different class totals to a member of staff mm -hmm. and then ask them to decide. So this basically takes us into our marked return process as what we're doing at the end of the, the academic year. We provide this report to them now. And again, it's meant to replace a lot of the spreadsheets that our staff have been using. We're getting it into the VLE. What we're just asking them to do is not do any of the maths or the calculations, but just choose which conditions apply. Now on the screen, if they so decide, they can override that course total. Um, 
we have cases where classes, if you get 39%, you automatically get upgraded to 40, and they can do that um, on the screen. We also had to bite the bullet and basically say, some of you are doing stuff that is so wacky, we can't model this. So we've had to offer an ability for them to take the data out of the screen, put it into a spreadsheet, and then re-import it back into, into that. Um, but once they do that, every mark that goes onto there is then valid validated against the corresponding marking scheme that's been set up for that, that course. Um, hitting the go button, reformats that, sends it to our student results system, and um, it goes off. Uh, and any issues get reported back to that screen for them to, to, um, to display. So that's what we've done to try and sort of make our assessment regimes flow all the way from the design part right through the teaching and right through into the delivery when we um, actually have to do uh, Mark's turn. Like I said, the project's still ongoing. We've had successes apart the Moodle, in terms of the Moodle development, the features of the Moodle. Uh, one of them has been the, ability, the discussion around uh, how we describe assessment regimes. Um, they are very complicated, but some of the information students want is actually quite simple. So we're trying to, we've been having a good discussion to bridge um, the, that um, gap. Having the ability to de deploy a standard gradebook to every course and also to redeploy it to a gradebook if it changes or basically say, actually apply that gradebook assessment regime to a different site that I'm going to use to replace that course has been incredibly useful. Um, we've managed to solve the bootstrapping class gradebooks for our staff. Um, um, hopefully that's reducing the sort of cognitive load on them thinking of where things have to go and what they need to set up for it. The separation of the assessment structure from the course delivery, again, has been helpful in terms of actually we, we've separated them into different data structures. Those data structures are becoming more versatile. They can be reused, reproduced, and uh, repurposed. But we've managed to retain the flexibility within that assessment regime or the teaching delivery of that assessment regime, um, but within a defined envelope of practice that has to go through quality control and um, policy, as it were. Um, what wasn't so successful, um, the process isn't fully running yet. Um, this isn't our fault. Actually, our student record upgrade got delayed by a year. Um, so we are sending it to the old student record process. Um, it has created another data set in our, in our, in our institution. Um, arguably, that data set is more useful than the data set we worked up with, with, with before because it's no longer continuous prose, it's data. Um, and it hasn't entirely eliminated, eliminated spreadsheets for uh, a number of cases, especially with things like there's logic. Um, on the upside, next version of Moodle, logical conditions come into the gradebook, and that's going to allow us to actually do some of those things which people use spreadsheets to make decisions about putting back into the gradebook, um, uh, and that's going to make a big difference to those processes. Um, and then it's also highlighted a sort of number of things that we would quite like to see or we don't think are currently in Moodle that um, really would help this process from us. Um, the sort of idea of a master template for a gradebook that can be applied and propagated throughout an institution would be really helpful. It would be really helpful for us. Um, we find that a lot of that process is just repetitive make work because it's broadly speaking the same. Um, the gradebook UI is still really cumbersome. Trying to move things about is not drag and drop, it's click and point. Calculation editor, we'd love to see more work done on that. You know, we're, we're comparing this against Excel's formula bar in some cases, and almost everybody's happy with how that works. It gives you really clear cues. Moodle, you're working with double square brackets and identifiers that aren't the identifier or the name of the activity, and it's really complicated. The aggregation tools we found to be really um, useful, uh, and they work really well, and actually they solve a lot of the maths case that we wanted to sort of hide from the, the staff. What they fed back to us, they, they want to see the working. They want to see, look at st particular students' value and see the breakdown of how that's happened uh, and the calculation. And they, they're reassured with spreadsheets because they can go in and see that information. But within Moodle, they're not so happy. So we'd love to see ways that the, that is getting sorted. And again, gradebook calculations feel really brittle and we still have to rely on them. And there's features in Moodle which you'd love to see that can it make it more obvious, can it make it more robust? Because when a gradebook breaks, if you've predicated everything on that gradebook, if it breaks, it's really hard to find out exactly where it's broken, especially if you're a teacher and you want to be teaching. So that's um, what we've tried to do with um, uh, management assessment and try and integrate it into a whole single process and just try and reduce the cognitive load on our staff so they can actually concentrate on 
their teaching activities rather than actually working out how to add them up. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, questions? Over there, Bob. Yeah. Hey, thanks a lot for um, showing that to us. Um, I just have a question about like how it's a really cool project. I think it's amazing. Um, how can you talk a little bit about how that project was initiated and kind of who sponsored it a little bit? Like uh, how did you how did you make it happen? Uh, so so this is a we have been working incrementally on bits of this for well kind of since we started with Moodle. Three years ago, we introduced um, some tweaks to our uh, to Moodle that's implemented our assessment feedback policy. Um, and that started to show our academic staff how we could ask for data in these things and start using the data and reusing it. Uh, and that caught the eye of more of our sort of senior staff. So this has actually been driven out of our learning enhancement committee as an actual, this is something the institution wants the VLE to do. Um, so that, that statement on the very first page was, was actually fed back from our uh, vice dean in the terms of um, uh, learning enhancement to our Senate, to present it to our Senate saying this is what we want to do with management of assessment. We, we should be building tools which allow our staff to teach and not administrate. So, so that's how we did it. But it took a long time to get to the point where we could go to those committees and say we think you should drive this, not us, and we don't want the technology driving it. Okay. Uh, um, you hold on. Can you can we just have the microphone so people can hear you at the back? <laughs> That's not going to work, uh, is it? Gaffer tape and super good. Yeah. Some blue tack already. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Um, did you encounter any problems with Turnitin or? Uh, no, we have integrated Turnitin using the plagiarism plugin rather than using other tools. So as far as we're concerned, our students and staff interact with the Moodle assign, assignment module, and Turnitin's a problem and that happens in the background. Um, so from that perspective, they don't think about it. We have a default configuration that is set up. So again, it was about making it, com we, we, want, we have a policy that says stuff should go through Turnitin. So sort of a convenience, to, compliance through convenience, we default the setup so they don't have to change it and it's just there. So it, it doesn't, it's not impacted as that uh, from that perspective. So we are basically using core Moodle features um, as, as the, the mainstay of all the, all the, the teaching activities. Okay, one more question. Yeah, just behind you. Behind you is behind you, Doug. <laughs> it's great stuff, uh, Michael. It's just a comment, really, that uh, for institutions who are interested in learning analytics, mm -hmm. uh, getting a, um, consistent grade books is mm -hmm. one of the uh, the challenges of uh, pulling together an institutional overview. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And we have a, a quite a developing learning analytics program for, it. and part again is again taking it back to our vice deans and vice principals and saying. If we can turn, turn this into data, we can make it part of learning analytics or not. But it has to be data. It can't just be written down on the back of an envelope. It's, it's just liable to be, you know, broken. <laughs> so. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. Thank you.